some of them don't want to get it and yeah. you can't save everybody. Thanks. And I think for me at a time, I was like, okay, God, I don't know if I want to really work in the music industry mm. anymore. Yeah. Um, but then I, you know, people kept reaching out and I'm like, okay, well maybe this is my right. duty to right. like help save, save the world, save some people. <laughs> yes. But child, listen, <laughs> outside. Yes. I live. And that's, that's, that's one of, that's one of the key things I want to talk about too, whether you're in management whether, you know, you have an agency representing just, you know, you know, personal brands mm-hmm. or small businesses, you don't want to work. You don't want to believe in and work harder than your clients. Yes. I'm not going to work believing. I'm not going to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Period. Good idea. Now we buy merch. Let's get out. Payment miss. Ooh, the ghetto. Say she quit. Ooh, the ghetto. Laid on your rent. Rent is ghetto. New event. Ooh, the ghetto. Invoice in. Get that ghetto. Rent is spin. Oh, that's ghetto. Hold on. Welcome back to another episode of the Ghetto CEO Podcast, where we talk about all things being a CEO, because y'all, it's giving very much ghetto, okay? On this podcast, we really try to give the transparent truth behind entrepreneurship, because a lot of times on social media, it's glamorized, you see in the G-Wagons and all the things, the Rolexes, but baby, it be some tears in the night, okay? And so I cannot wait for you guys to get this next guest, but listen, before we get there, I want you guys guys to like comment and subscribe head over to apple Podcasts or spotify Podcasts, leave a review and then go get your merch okay because i want you to know that you are not the only ceo that feels like it's ghetto and i got one ceo here y'all and when i tell you she is literally the epitome of the ceo boss that you need to know and i i listen i'm gonna let her introduce herself okay because <laughs> the resume is long okay <laughs> And I, welcome to the studio, Miss Tish Taylor. Thank you for having me. I am like, I'm so happy I'm here. Yay. And like I said, I'm shocked that I'm here too. <laughs> she was like, you want me? I'm like, yes, girl. You are that girl. Thank you. Yes, Thank tell them you. who you are and what you do. So Sure. So I am Tish Taylor Cersei. I am the owner and founder of Brand Fetish. I am mom. I am wife. I am entrepreneur. I am girl friend yes. i am sister i am all of that all the things <laughs> all the things all the things you know that's that's what we have to do right but you've been doing this for a while so yes. tell them walk them a little bit through your story mm-hmm. and how you got here and how did tish taylor uh-huh. become this this woman okay let's tish taylor is still Cersei. tish taylor Cersei. Cersei, yes. yes i am newly well two years married yes. um but um Girl, I have been doing this 20 plus years. I am 45 years old. A lot of people don't. Girl, think where? that. The only way we know that is because you got a grown child. <laughs> but like, that's your brother. Yes, I've been doing this a long time. And I got, I pretty much got started very young. I used to run around a radio station with my mm. mom. She okay. worked at a radio station in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, my hometown. Yeah. Um, the radio station was called WNOV Radio Station. And I, well, I got started in the music space first. Okay. Okay. So being in the radio station, I'm like, I want to do with the promo reps do Mm. so the promo reps are people that come to the radio station they bring the artists to the station Mm -hmm. they set up promotions they set up marketing and i'm like i think that's something that i want to do so i go to college think i get pregnant with my son jacob and i go to college and i'm like i don't want to do i don't want to do music you know marketing anymore i want to do fashion go to college do fashion hated fashion well, I like fashion. I just didn't like working in fashion. Okay, okay. Retail, attitudes, customers. <laughs> Not my vibe. Not my vibe. Because who you talking to? Yeah. Because <laughs> who you talking to? Right. So being that I had the relationships growing up as mm-hmm. a little girl, teenager, um, running around a radio station, I started to intern for the record reps, the promo reps, um, that were in Chicago because they would always come to Milwaukee anyway. So I would intern for them. Then I became a college rep for Sony music like three weeks before my graduation. Cause your girl needed a job, a full-time job with benefits. And so God blessed me with that. And that's pretty much how I got really started. You know, I started as a Sony music college rep and then I was promoted to a, um, 
I was promoted to a field marketing rep the three weeks before I graduated. So that's that's the correct thing. I was they asked me to do marketing for the state of Wisconsin. Okay. I did not want to do marketing for the state of Wisconsin. I didn't think I wanted to go back to Milwaukee. Yes. But like I said, it was I needed the benefits. I needed the job. Yes. And so there I am back in back in Milwaukee as, you know, this marketing representative for for Sony Music at the time. Yes. Um, I worked for Sony Music for about four or five years. I was laid off in 2005. Okay. And then I, I started working for a company called GMR Marketing. Okay. And that's where I became an account executive for Kimberly Clark and Scott Tissue. Mm. Loved it. Loved it. Yes. So being out of the music world and going into the consumer goods world, mm. that Fortune 500 consumer goods world, yes. it was just... It was a different experience that I truly, truly needed. And um, I was over um, a really exciting activation um, called the Common Sense House, the Scott Tissue Common Sense House. And we did about 12 different festivals. We had a huge footprint. We did 12 different festivals. I oversaw, you know, brand ambassadors and like 12 different markets. It was it was a really it was a really great experience for me. from there, I had to segue because my son was like, I want to sing and dance. Mm. And I thought he was amazing. Aww. And I said, all right, I'm about to manage you. Period. And I left everything. I, every, all of my dreams and aspirations mm. to, you know, have a budding agency and, you know, do marketing for all these great brands. Yeah. Just came, It really came to a halt once yeah. my son Jacob said, I want to sing and dance. And I needed to be there for him. So, you know, I think that that's, that's a... First of all, yes, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. The, being able to really like listen to your child and say, mm-hmm. okay, I'm gonna stop what I need to do to really support you. But the other part I heard was a lot of people I would assume from the outside looking in thinks that you probably got into the industry because of Jacob, mm-hmm. but you was already being that. Girl. I was already, I was already that. I yes. was already that. And honestly. That experience is what helped me get him to where he is today. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, you and just for, for the people, we're talking about Jacob Lattimore. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, a lot of people like to use the term momager. But mm-hmm. I, I say I, I, I couldn't if I if I was not a good marketer, mm-hmm. I would not have been able to get him to where he is Mm. so you know i like the term momager but then i don't like the term momager you know what i'm saying because i'm like you got to be a marketer to to get to keep your kid and to be business oriented and to be to be strategic you know in this entertainment world so marketing is what helped me get him to where he is today yes and Mm -hmm. i i love that you know i love it because i'm a marketer and i'll be Mm -hmm. like marketing gotta come first yeah marketing gotta come first it has to regardless of the industry Mm -hmm. of what you're doing but i love that you got that experience and you brought it back to your child right so jacob has been in the shy like he's like my favorite character on the shy (laughs) but he also has a buddy artistry career like mm-hmm. all the things so how did that get to where it is today like did it what, what age did he start at, what at age nine. Oh wow nine years old okay. he started at nine years old so this is about 2005 2006 so all of the promotion ex- promotions experience mm-hmm. that I learned the sales experience that I learned mm-hmm. um the activation experience yeah. I learned the importance of building community that I learned wow. and did, you know yes. what I'm saying? For those other brands to do for him. Um, it took all of that. It took yeah. all of that. When we got started, um, I, I was wearing all the hats. Mm-hmm. Just like any entrepreneur, you're yeah. wearing all the hats. I'm yeah. like, okay, he's nine years old. He can't really be on a radio right. because that's not the demo. You know, the target demo at Urban Radio is about... Mm, 24 to 40 okay. or older uh, pop radio you starting a little younger but Jacob at the time he's R&B mm. so pop radio ain't thinking about you know a black kid yeah. doing R&B music or anything like that yeah. unless you you know just to be but um during that time i'm like okay so where's your where's for me my thought is where's your target audience mm. your target audience they at school yeah they in the mall yeah they had the skating rinks yes. they had the boys and girls club yes. at the time back then the ymca they yes. were they were where kids are supposed to be at mm-hmm. during that time you know so I reached out to literally every school in Milwaukee, every mm-hmm. boys and girls club, every YMCA, every skating rink. And I set up his own promo tour. 
I love that. I set up his own promo tour. Nice. I created merch because um, I'm like, well, we got to make some money. Yeah. So most most <laughs> of the schools, because I'm like, I ain't working. <laughs> we don't have to figure this we out. We got to figure it out. <laughs> so um, most of the schools have like small budgets. So mm-hmm. I would say, you know, if you buy three to four hundred dollars worth of T-shirts to give to your students, then we can come and do this show okay. and, you know. All that good stuff. So right. that's pretty much how I got him started. Okay. And we did all of that in Milwaukee. I had a relationship at Radio Disney. And I was okay. like, well, let me try this relationship. They had a little program called The Incubator. I sent them the record. They called me back and they're like, oh, we love this record. We want to put it in our, you know, we want to put it in rotation. Yes. And I'm like, okay, great. So I'm like, okay, now I got Radio Disney behind, yes. behind him yes. at this time. And I literally took everything I did in Milwaukee and did it in Chicago. Mm. Every school, every skating rink, boys and girls, just just redid the redid the whole little yeah. plan. Finding your blueprint, yeah, and, and redid it. it, yeah, and then did the same thing coming to Atlanta. What? Yes. <laughs> Period. That, that's how you know it worked. Yes, because it's like I did it three times. Now it got to be working. Yes, and did the same thing coming to Atlanta, and then 2010, he gets he got his first record deal with uh, Jive Records. Okay, yeah. Dope, dope, mm-hmm. dope, dope. So yeah. now, okay, he got this record deal. How are you feeling as a mom? Right, I know you're excited Woo, because we struggle so much, mm-hmm. girl. The struggle was real. Yeah, get up. It was very, <laughs> the struggle was real. I ended up, I did have to, you know, I ended up having to go back to work. Okay. I ended up working at a college um, as a, as a, as an admin, college admin, administrative mm-hmm. rep. Hated it. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> he said, Lord, I hated it. I hated it. The only good thing that, the, you know, I feel like when you work for other people, you should always try to take the good and the bad. Absolutely. So the good that I learned while working as a college rep is the the sales calls. Okay. You know what I mean? The sales calls trying to get the students to come in to visit me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And get them enrolled. Okay. So, you know, the cold calling experience is yeah. something that I did take. I thought was a good experience for me. Okay. Other other than that, <laughs> it was ghetto. <laughs> Very yeah. much so. Yes, yes, yes. Very so, much so. So you had to go, and I think that that's an important note for people to know. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes she don't be working out. Oh no, and it's okay to go back and figure it out and come back. Mm-hmm. But y'all didn't stop. No, no, no. We didn't stop. We didn't stop. I had to go to work. I mean, there were times. I girl, I stopped getting my nails done. Mm, there were times sacrifice. where. We ate, like, potatoes for a week, like, just sliced them and just kept it moving. Yes, yes. <laughs> we really did. It had it had got really, really, really bad for us. So him getting the record deal was like a breath of fresh air. Mm. You know what I mean? It was a breath of fresh air. But it was like it wasn't the end. Right. You know what I mean? The great thing, and I think what's different for me and other parents that manage their kids Mm -hmm. I already had music industry experience Mm -hmm. so I knew that wasn't the end I knew that we were gonna still have to continue what you said our blue our blueprint you know what I'm saying so um because once you get into a system it's a lot of opinion Mm -hmm. it's about it's about you know it's a lot of well you shouldn't do that but it's like this shit excuse me no you cuss girl (laughs) this shit been working yes (laughs) Yeah, all this time. Right, I gotta keep. Why wouldn't I keep with what's flowing? Yeah, yeah. it's been working all this time. Mm-hmm. So why not? Right, right. You know, um. So you know, the record label experience during that time, it had it, it has it had its good times, but it also had its bad times. Yeah. I would say on the marketing side, it was. It was great. Yeah. On the music side, that's where the frustration comes in. Because everybody got an opinion about what record and this and this mm. and that. And during that time, I have to say, I hated every record that did come out. So, yeah. you know, but the marketer in me was like, I got to keep him on the road. Yeah. I got to move. I got to move. You got to mo- market it good or bad. Good or bad. <laughs> yeah. I kept him on the road. And I felt like. You, when you're managing talent, you have to know their strong point. And I knew Jacob's strong point was performance. Mm. And also, before we even got the deal, I would say, at, at 9 or 10 years old, I said, if you're going to be in the entertainment industry, mm. you need to be well-rounded and you're going to act. Mm. He was like, I don't want to act. You should definitely act. Oh, wow. Because it's also entertainment. Yeah. It's just another form of performing. Yes. Saying all this, and I thank God for putting that on my heart because I didn't know that he could just naturally act. Mm. And this is what's today. That's what's 
making him the successful yes. financially right, right, right. <laughs> successful so person is today. For him is doing better. Well, not better, but it's, it's a caring him more than yeah, the music is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. The music industry going to play fair yeah. or pay fair. Yes. Play or pay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Fairly at all. Yeah. Most of, most of the times in the music industry, you're, you're spending way more than you're getting back. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the streaming industry, they pay they pay pennies, wow. you know, which which that's something we call what well, the music industry calls mechanical royalties. Okay. Mechanical royalties are something that you get monthly. OK, so that's streaming income. I mean, you got to do about just to make 5K, you probably got to do. Five million to eight million streams. What? Yeah. That's so just wild. imagine you do a record and you like, oh, I'm going to get, I want Summer Walker on this record or yeah. I want Lil Baby on this record. And they charging you a hundred K. Yeah. You already in a hole. <laughs> right. If you don't, we if, did no marketing yet. Yeah. You ain't did no marketing yet. And you ain't even, them streams ain't even adding up. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. that made me think about, cause we have, I, I, you know, we be in the shade room comments, mm-hmm. right. And we hear about these different, um, people that come out like my contract wasn't right. Mm-hmm. This wasn't right. And then we hear about all of these stories from back in the day where people not making money, mm-hmm. but people don't realize the business of it. And like you saying, it's, totally different like yeah. you already in the whole not only do you got advances that you got to pay like all of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff and is music really can it be profitable like at what point do you get to the point where it's like this industry is profitable for me you know everybody's situation different mm-hmm. i what i always say is there's different businesses inside the music mm-hmm. business you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's when personal branding comes into play yes, in the music yes, business. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's good to always have extensions of your, you know, your professional brand mm-hmm. in the music. So merchandising, yes. touring, you know, you can definitely make money in touring. You can make money in merchandising, depending on the type of merchandise. You know, sometimes people got to segue into more of a lifestyle type mm-hmm. of merchandise. Um if you have performance royalties, that comes into play with radio, mm-hmm. um, endorsement deals, brand partnerships, yeah. syncs, licensing your records, depending on, and that's and that truly depends on how much ownership you have of the record, the mm-hmm. publishing. Did you write the record? Do yeah. you own the master? Then you can make your money on the sync side like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, <laughs> it can get ghetto. It can get real. It can get real ghetto. So yes. you know, it unfortunately, you know, our culture, mm-hmm. and because I've worked for several, you know, record labels. Um, after you know, once once Jacob turned eighteen, mm-hmm. I um I started working for a record label here in Atlanta called okay. Think It's a Game. Okay, okay, yeah. And then I worked for another record label out in Brooklyn called Cinematic Music Group. Okay. Um, but you know, unfortunately, when it comes to our young men, some young women, yeah. they just they're just they don't really know, they're just not financially smart. Yeah, absolutely. With the funds that they get. Um, and also when it comes to contracts, um, Language is very important mm-hmm. with any contract. Yeah. You know what I mean? Language is important. So let's say um, you get a you get a contract and there's like, okay, we want five LPs, but we want three mixtapes. Mm. So what? Mi- so you know, a label can say, well, we're gonna put a mixtape out on you. Yeah. You know this this year. That means they don't got to pay you more of an advance. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? Once they pay you, once you put out an album, they they advance you for that album just to hold you over. But then they're Mm -hmm. like, oh, no, I'm going to put out a mixtape. Well, we ain't got to give you no money. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's still like you in the hole. You still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, girl, music industry can get very complicated. Yeah, it sounds (laughs) like it sounds very like you got it. But I think the blessing of it all is, you need to have somebody in your corner like you. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, and I know you can't be in all the people's corner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody would love to have yeah. a mom <laughs> that can help them. But being able to really, and I think that this is across the board, not even, I know some people are watching this, that's not in the music industry, mm-hmm. right? But like, you gotta, you take those same principles that you're talking about, mm-hmm. and you gotta intimately be able to know whatever industry that yes, you're in. Yes, you, you gotta know. that Girl, there's something I... 
I just, I teach it and preach it so often. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever business you're going to get in, learn mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And also learn every sales channel. Yes. How yes. you going to make some money? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because yes. I don't want to just be looking cute. Mm-hmm. I need to know how these bills getting paid for real. And I, and you know what? I don't want to be, if we're, in t- if we're talking about music industry, mm-hmm. I don't want to be dependent on a corporation. Yes. To make sure that my bills are getting paid. Absolutely. Because I hear all the time, um, even when we had our agency, I used to work with different artists and people. And I would just hear the stories about like, oh, okay, yeah, the art, the, the label mad at me right now. Like, they not going to do, you know, like, mm-hmm. dang, they can literally like turn the switch off. Yeah. Like, yeah. on my bills, yeah. on my livelihood, like my money stops. Mm-hmm. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, and it's like having... Um, we talk about we are entrepreneur as musician, you know, as a musician, but are you? Because you really clocking into this job if they really have control. So you gotta build these other lines of revenue. Yes, absolutely. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I don't even know if they some of them wanna get it though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of them don't wanna get it. And yeah. you can't save everybody. Hey. And I think for me at a time. I was like, okay, God, I don't know if I want to really work in the music industry mm. anymore. Yeah. Um, but then I, you know, people kept reaching out, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe this is my right. duty to right. like help save, save the world, save some people. <laughs> yes. But child, listen, <laughs> outside. Yes. I live. And that's 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 one of that's one of the key things I want to talk about too. Whether you're in management. Whether, you know, you have an agency representing just, you know, you know, personal brands mm-hmm. or small businesses, you don't want to work. You don't want to believe in and work harder than your clients. Yes. I'm not going to work believing. I'm not going to believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Period. Yes. Never. Yes. I can't. Because mm-hmm. I can only. And, and it's so funny that you say that because I remember when I was an uh, agency owner mm-hmm. and I had these clients that were influencers and mm-hmm. all the things. Right. And I would literally have to beg them to get up to work. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, oh, Fashion Nova trying to give us $20,000 to make one post. Mm-hmm. Can you do it? Oh, I'm tired today. Oh, no. Oh, my man want to fly me out. No. And I'm like, my commission come off of this. So if you don't get up and work, right. then I can't eat. Right. So I literally had to make myself the personal brand. Mm-hmm. And I tell people, if I would have had somebody that worked, I probably would have stayed behind the mm-hmm. scenes because I never wanted to be the talent. Mm-hmm. Like, I like working. I mm-hmm. like marketing. I like doing the things. But it's frustrating, like yeah. you said, as management or the agency or whatever, when you want it more than your client. Yeah. Yeah. And also, even on a management or agency side, we, our goal is to build our portfolio yeah. too. So if you hindering that, yeah. that's irritating. Yeah. I can't even get a, I can't even, you know, show a full campaign because yes. you don't want to do nothing. Yes. I can't even show receipts for real because yeah. you won't get up. You won't get up. You don't want to do nothing. Yes. Do you completely feel like your content is trash? Like you really could take your brand to the next level if you could really figure out how to do marketing, how not to spend all your time online, how to really systemize your social media and get your followers off of social media and into your bank account. Well, listen, I want to give you a free 15 minute content audit with myself and my team. And so we can really dive into your social media page. We can really dive into what you're already doing with marketing and we can see what gaps you already have. Now, listen, I want to show you how you can work with us and we can help you fill in these gaps, but you may get off the call and you may feel completely full and you may not need us completely fine with me. So what I want you to do is click the link below, book a call with us so we can see if we can work together this year or if you got everything that you need to go to the next level. Let's go. Well, luckily you had your son and you had a whole different type of uh, persuasion of your own child. Well, you know, he was a hard worker. So I'm okay. blessed. Listen, I was just blessed that, you know, he, he wanted it. Yes. He wanted it. And so for me, he's just like autopilot, you know, mm. just on autopilot yeah. for me. He just makes it very, very easy. And another thing, too, is I think for him, the great thing about him, not like a lot of other artists um, or actors or musicians, sometimes it's hard for them to think outside of that industry. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They don't really know how they... They have no other desires, yes, yes, yes. no other 
nothing. Purpose, right? No, they, don't they don't know. They have. They don't know what to do with their life. They mm-hmm. are literally stuck. Mm-hmm. There are some musicians who would be great. You know physical trainers, yeah. you know, there will be, there are some, there are, you know, talent that would just be great entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. but they just so stuck. I don't know if it's pride. Yeah. I don't really know what it is. If, you know, I think that you had one, I think that people, my um, perception is like, I think people have to walk to get more clarity. Mm-hmm. And even if you have the thought, if you never start moving, the God can't yeah. provide you more yeah, clarity yeah, yeah. on mm-hmm. what's to come. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so I, I think it's commendable that even though he didn't want to act, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You was like, I think you need to yeah. try this. Now look yeah. at, you know, mm-hmm. look at Jacob. He has literally, that's what people know him for, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so he has embodied this character mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. the shot. I know he's done millions of other things, mm-hmm. but I think that you got to see outside of this box. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, uh, you know, I don't mean to tell his business, but you know, because <laughs> he gonna be like, "This is about you and me." But uh, you know, he's his, his thing is entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. and you know, he's b- building a really great, you know, um, real estate portfolio, Aww. and that's his thing. Yeah, that's his thing. Yeah. So I'm extremely proud of him. As you, know? you should mm-hmm. be, mom. You did that, girl. Yes, thank Pat you. Set yourself up on the back. <laughs> so I know there are a lot of parents. They're like they see something in their child. So what advice would you give them you know that should because you know some kids you know everybody ain't got the sauce Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying but how do you determine when it is okay to make that sacrifice that you made to to for to pour into your child I I mean this is I don't want to sound I mean, let me work this <laughs> girl give it to us you real. gotta make sure they good for real yeah I know we love our kids mm-hmm. yeah they, are they good for real for real no facts for real no for real they gotta be good yeah you gotta know that they good yep you gotta feel it you gotta feel it yep. i felt it It was a no-brainer for me mm-hmm. it was it was a no-brainer yeah you gotta feel it but you know if you do want to move forward i would say you know as a parent you know if your child is under 18 you need to be with them mm. <laughs> yeah. you need to be with them you need anybody could be a momager a momager ain't nothing but sitting on set making sure your kid get from point a to point, point b. b right but if you want to be a manager, mm-hmm. a brand manager, yeah. you got to learn marketing. Ooh, tell them again. You're going to have to learn marketing in order to get your child from $100 a day yeah. to 100 k a day, yeah. you know, or yeah. a week. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it, that, it's going to take that. It's going mm-hmm. to take great negotiation skills. Yep. It's going to take listening. It's going to take knowing that you do not have to know everything. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of, that's a, that's a, that's a big problem with people. They Mm. feel like they can't listen to other people. Right. You know, and especially when it comes to your child, if you are a parent, parenter, momager or whatever, you know, sometimes they're scared to let people in or, you know, be close. But sometimes you got to know what you don't know. Mm. And so I've been blessed to have amazing team members throughout the year. So. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. So switching gears a little bit, you just you got married two years ago. Yes, so I how did. New way life. It is amazing. Yeah, it is it, amazing. You just glowing, girl. It's just giving. I'm giving. <laughs> I'm getting loved real good. It's, it's, you know what? <laughs> no relationship is perfect. Let's yes. put that out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, me and my husband before marriage, we had been together for years, girl. Wow. How uh, long? Girl. Probably like off now, 15, 16. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and so, I, you know, I say this all the time, but I feel like we got married earlier. It wasn't even how it works out. Mm. So, I would like to say, you know, do it at your own time. and Oh, girl, pace. you just spoke into my life, child. Okay. Yes. Do it. Because, you know, a lot of people are like, when y'all doing mm-hmm. this? When y'all doing that? And, you know, it ain't everybody's business to know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I knew it wasn't the right time. Yeah. He knew it wasn't the right time. Yeah. But when it was the right time, it was the, the right, right time. time. Yes. You know, so yes. we are so happy. Oh. And I thank God for, I just thank God for um, being in the, uh, what's the word? I just thank God for being in the reversal business. Mm. Reversing all of that, what yes. we went through yeah. to where we are right now. I so I thank it. God for that. I love that. You know, and 
I think people put a lot of pressure on rela- other people's relationships. Mm-hmm. It's crazy, right? Because I was telling you before this, like, me and my boyfriend been together for six years. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, so when y'all gonna get married? What's mm-hmm. happening? And I'm like, y'all, y'all gotta realize when we met, I was, we was friend for, friends first for mm-hmm. like two years. Mm-hmm. So when we met, I was like 21 years old. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to get married two years after. Like, at 23, when I graduated college, like, I needed time to grow up. And mm-hmm. even though he is older than me, he, like, he saw that in me. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, you ain't ready. You keep talking about you ready, mm-hmm. but you're not ready mm-hmm. yet. And so, I think a lot of times, even just not even in relationships, things in life, period, mm-hmm. stop letting everybody else rush you. Yeah. And oh, I absolutely. think that's beautiful, mm-hmm. that what you just said. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't let nobody rush you. Yeah. You'll know when it's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we here, and yeah. we are just—it's definitely a different kind of love. It's a—it's almost just fresh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I so, I, I thank God for where we are today. Yes, mm-hmm. and I was just like looking at the video, the <laughs> wedding. It was just so beautiful, and I even—I think y'all just went to a concert. We went to girl. We always go. <laughs> girl was at a comedy show last night. Yeah, I see. That's that. like our <laughs> thing. Yes. Our thing is like you know. A com- it don't really we don't overthink what mm-hmm. we're gonna do okay I love that girl we, we had to stay for our marina <laughs> about like, five times day. a month <laughs> you know so yes. we just like just go out and hang out you I know what I mean it. and we don't overthink it we don't overthink it at all yes mm-hmm. so y'all have been together for a while or on and off for a while how did that go with introducing him to Jacob and like well, all of well actually we met Early on, girl, let's see, we met like 2005, 2006. Actually, he's a, he's he helped with Jacob. Oh wow! Yeah, he wow. helped. He helped because there were like remember what I said earlier is you know don't be afraid to bring people in mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. that that sparta you in certain areas. Yeah. Now I knew I had the marketing down pack, mm-hmm. and at that time, a lot of producers were coming to me. Mm-hmm. A lot of producers and writers. And I'm like, I need somebody that I trust to right. kind of deal with this side, which mm-hmm. they call the A&R side. Okay. And I'm like, I need somebody to deal with that. Okay. And so he was that person. Oh, mm-hmm. look, listen, God was sprinkled. Yeah. He will show you the future before he gets to He was to that you. person. I love that. So he's in the music, music industry too. He's in the music industry too. Okay. My husband got started. Um, He discovered Rico Love, the songwriter oh, wow. Rico Love. Okay. Um, he managed K Michelle. Okay. Um, of course he helped me with Jacob. Yeah. Um, currently he's on the music publishing side, the catalog side. Okay. okay. Um, so basically, you know, when you hear, oh, Tina Turner sold her masters mm-hmm, or started, mm-hmm. my husband is a broker. Okay. So, got it. Yeah. Got so it. he helps the states and songwriters and producers that need some money. Yeah. <laughs> um, he also he helps them sell their their catalogs. I, first of all, y'all got this whole like executive household <laughs> thing going on. So all of y'all in the music industry mm-hmm. at some point in your career, right? Mm-hmm. Do you sing too, girl? No. Oh, uh, so you gonna give us? A Would tour? you want to know what's funny, <laughs> girl? When I was younger. You from you you from the church, right? Yes, yes. Girl, when I first started going to church, it was like when God, so when you get saved, God gonna give you <laughs> yes. all the desires of your heart. I was like, oh God, gonna let I'm gonna be able to die and sing. Girl, no. I, no. So when I thought the first time I got saved and yes. filled with the Holy Ghost at the time, yes. I thought I was gonna be able to hit every run. Oh, did that you try? Kimberell did. Did you try? Girl, try, I did. It was horrible. Oh. <laughs> you sound like me because I immediately went to the choir. And you know, they throw you in the alto section and you really can't see. Child. Oh, my God. I was like, you, do you see? you like, no. So where did Jacob learn how to see? His his dad's side. Oh, okay. His dad's He's side. Like, the whole me. family singers. Okay, okay, His okay. dad, his uncles, Kenny Lattimore is his cousin. Okay. You know, when I say everybody on that side know how to sing, that's oh, where wow. that singing come from. But I used to be a little dancer. Oh, ooh. Ooh. I can't dance no oh, more. So you gonna show us up? No. <laughs> I don't know. I can I give you a little two step a little one, and a two. little bounce <laughs> yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, but I used to be a little dancer. So that's where I think his stage presence comes okay. from. Like, you know, just dancing. And of yes. course, all of the amazing, you know, choreographers that we had. Yes. I love in. it. I love it. That is hilarious. <laughs> Listen, like, I just I knew I was gonna years. be Brandy when I got say. <laughs> I, I did. I ain't got all the gifts. I got some of the gifts. Okay, <laughs> can't have them all. I did. Listen. So on this on this uh, podcast, we do a segment called "Figure It Out" okay. because as CEOs, we are always 
figuring it out. Okay. Like every day we call us firefighters. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna choose something from here and then you're gonna tell us what you would do if this scenario happened to you. You ready? Okay. Let's see. All right. So you are in one of the you are in the middle of one of the biggest launches of the year and your second in command quits without any notice. What's next? Hmm. My second in command quits. You know what? I'm wearing a second in command hat. Period. <laughs> I'm gonna have to the show up. must go on. Yes, yeah. Yeah. The show must go on. Yes. So that's what's going on. I love yeah. it. I love it. So when you think about being a CEO is ghetto. Like, what is the most ghettoest thing that you've had to learn through your career and your tenure mm. as a CEO? The ghettoest thing. The ghettoest thing I've had to learn. <laughs> um, girl, I guess it's really hard to bite your tongue. Mm. Ooh, yes. Cause I ain't Michelle Obama yet. Yeah. <laughs> Period. You go low, I'm going low right with you. Mm-hmm. I might even go lower. Oh, basically. And that's something I got to work on that. Mm-hmm. But I I do it, but I'm working on it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Um. Oh, yeah. I feel like whether you're working within a team or working with a client, you know, for me, let's see on the TV and film side, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of producers, they, you know, these people, they think they can talk to you any kind of way. Mm-hmm. Who are you talking to? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> you started the episode with who are you talking to yeah. <laughs> in the retail. Yes. You know, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't play that game yeah. very well. Yeah. I don't play that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Another thing that's ghetto. Let's see. Girl, give me another example. Girl, so. it'd be all kind of stuff this so year. Okay. Um, I always say it was me learning how to be a leader and mm-hmm. be become to be able to manage a team. Like okay. I just didn't know that's how to a do good this. one. For me, it is it is trust. Mm-hmm. You know, Jacob is my most successful client. Yes. Um, so it is trust. We've ha- I don't even know if I'm gonna tell the story. But you know, people like stepping outside of their role. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, it, that's that's something we've had to deal with. And I, it's been difficult for me to continue to bring people in, especially just, just for his account. Yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know, as a, as a budding agency, you want to have, you know, you want to bring in account managers to oversee certain things. Right. But, you know, we've had tour managers, role managers just overstep their boundaries. Mm. Like you a role manager. I don't need you to call an agency. I don't need you to call a studio. Mm. I don't need you to do any of that. Right. You know, that's embarrassing. Right. And this color. Mm-hmm. We got to be in line. We got to be in line. This right yeah. here. Yeah. We don't have the luxury yep. to fuck up. Yes. We don't. So reel it in. Yes. Or you out. Yeah. And that's it. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I guess, you know, ghetto is finding a great people to be on your team like you said and um I would I guess that's that's definitely probably the main thing. Yeah and trust being able to trust people. Yeah. Because Jacob is your you say Jacob is your most successful client, but you got another special connection to him. That's yeah. your that's that's yeah. your pride and joy, yeah. right? So at the end of the day there is you do him wrong, you you doing me wrong twice. Yeah. You yeah. messing with my check but you also messing with my son. Yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. you got to have the right people around mm-hmm. him, you know and around you mm-hmm. in, in, in this atmosphere. So talk to us a little bit about your agency. So okay. what type of client are you only working? I know you said you were trying to get out of the music industry, but yeah. they keep pulling you back. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you only working with artists? Like how how No, your I'm not. So brand fetish and the, the, you know what's crazy is, you know, I've had my agency for a minute mm-hmm. and I really needed to truly identify my business model. Mm. And I've always worked for other companies too. So okay. I treated my agency more like a side hustle. Cause when you working for somebody else, they come yeah. first. Yeah. You know, remember yeah. you called me and I was yeah. like, girl, they just promoted me to yeah. EVP. Yeah. That was a whole thing. That's another podcast. Story. Yes. But, um, 
Currently, brand fetish is twofold, okay. brand management and multi-channel marketing. Okay. As I feel like my experience has been a little bit of everything. everything. Yeah. And that's what I can offer, you know. So on the brand management side, we have talent management and creator management and okay. business management. And then on the multi, multi-channel multi marketing side, it's um, uh, marketing campaign development mm-hmm. and strategy mm-hmm. and execution. Yeah. Yeah, so although I, I do have an, a, a music client, which is Motown Gospel and okay. Capital Christian Music Group, and I said, God, if you want me to be in the music industry, <laughs> bring me some. Nice. They gonna have to be a client. Yes. I'm not going into another building, yes. you know. And then also, I would say back in even before, I would say even when I was working for Sony at the time, that's when multicultural agencies were starting to flourish mm. and I'm like I think I want to you know I want to do that too yes. so I had started this little company called don't sleep entertainment Period. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember calling the Milwaukee County Zoo because you know as an agency sometimes you got to reach out and mm-hmm. well not sometimes but most of the time you reaching out and letting them know what you offer and um I had I, I called the um this was like in 2006 seven something like that and I called the Milwaukee County Zoo and I said hey I'm I'm Tish Taylor and you know I'm the you know the founder (laughs) of Don't Sleep and you know my company um we help we help bring you know we help um market the African-American community to get them you know to get them excited about your products your services and girl the lady was like this sounds amazing girl I was scared I was like what (laughs) Like, I wouldn't speak. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Girl, it scared the living daylights what? out of me. I never called that lady back. Uh, <laughs> ma'am, please call her back. <laughs> I never called her back. And at the beginning of this year, once I realized, like, okay, I'm not going to work. I don't want to. I'm not trying to go work for anybody else. Yeah. I really need to get my agency in order. And I remember mm. my passion back then. Although I was, it scared me. Right. I remember my passion back then. I'm like, I really want to get. I want to. I want to get back into multi-channel integrated marketing. Yes. And so that's how. This is where brand fetish is now. I yeah. love it, girl. It's about to blow up. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank this you is so your much. year. I, I'm glad that you are. Finally stepping into your power, yes. girl. I'm telling you, yeah. I, we see boss all over you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I needed I to hear like, that. Yeah. I think we all, you know, yeah. I think sometimes we all fall short of, of course, imposter syndrome. We Absolutely. all fall short of like just the fear of like, oh my god, I'm about to really do this, mm-hmm. you know, because we have so much that we can look at and see what's yes. going around us. But you know what? Audrea, I think Audrea said this mm-hmm. once. She said it a couple weeks ago. Um, sometimes you're watching a disaster. Mm. Yes. I was yes. like, that's a bar. Okay. <laughs> you need to put a, you need a producer. You right. need a beat behind that. Yes. And that has stuck with me the last couple of weeks because mm. I, I almost some fear has set in. Set in. Yeah. I'm like, can I really do this? Yes. You know, but I appreciate that. No, Thank absolutely. You. And you know, I think that if you don't get imposter syndrome, you're not dreaming big enough. Mm. Because I literally, the entire year of 2022, I was like, I don't know if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I kept praying. I kept praying. I kept praying. I was like, God, if you want me to be here, because I'm going to go get a job. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. want me to be here, then you're going to have to show me. And mm-hmm. every time I'll be like, mm, he'll show me again. Or mm-hmm. I'll randomly walk outside and somebody's like, oh, my God, you helped me make so much mm-hmm. money. I'm mm-hmm. like, girl. Like, you know, then I got to Girl, you do this. <laughs> You do this. You do this. You do this. That's what I be telling you. You do this. (laughs) You do. Yes. I I thank you. I thank you. I received this. So I I tell you that, and I understand it's new, but it's about to go crazy. Thank you. So I'm excited for this next chapter for you. But what would you say? Um, to anybody that's feeling the way that you're feeling, they're stepping into a new season of their life, mm-hmm. right? They spent their life in a whole nother industry or they've been doing things and serving other people, yeah. but now they're about to serve themselves. Yeah, that's, what, oh, that's good. What would you say to them? I would say, number one, and this is what I did. Mm-hmm. I, I stepped back. I stepped back and assessed my strengths, my weaknesses, and what I truly wanted to do. Yes. I ain't got to do everything. Yes. And I had to understand, I don't got to do this and I don't got to do, you know, and I don't have to do that. And I had to get out of that hustle man, hustle mentality. Yes. You know what I'm yes. saying? Yes. The same way, the same 
teachings that I would teach anybody else or teach my, you know, if it's a talent client or a creator client or a professional brand, the same thing I'm teaching you, I got to teach, I got to do for myself. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's challenging yes. for people like us. Yes. You know what I'm it saying? Is. I, I spoke to many managers and executives like, I don't know what to do, but it's like, this is what you, you do, do all day. <laughs> yes. But when yes. it comes to us, it's like, mm-hmm. ooh. You know, I so I would it. say step back. I would say get quiet, mm. really get quiet. You know, it's yeah. a lot of disruption out there. You know, good disruption, but there are, some disruption can be a distracting right? d- disruption right, right. where you're just kind of like all lost over all yeah. over the place. And I think for me um, at a time, I felt like my business model was everybody else's business model and it ain't mine. Right, right, right. And so now to have clarity now I know what clients I want, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what clients I don't want. Yes. And I just have, you know, just clarity and just direction, you I know, for myself. It. So I love yeah. it. So what's next? You know, Jacob is on the shot. They got a new season. I'm yeah. excited about that. You got more clients that's coming in. Yeah. What's next for your Girl, company and your clients? What's next is, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I, I feel like my purpose has always been to amplify, mm. you know, so I, I you know, I just want to continue to amplify. Yes. And I really want to have clients that we are here. Yeah. Not me here. And, and you, you here, here. <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just I just want to continue to amplify my clients. I want to mm-hmm. build a great portfolio community. That's mm-hmm. something I have not done for myself. Okay. I want to build community. Yes. You've done an amazing job Thank at that. Thank you. Thank you. Girl. My girl, <laughs> you the queen. <laughs> Queen, no, girl, not at all. Far yes. from it. I still feel like this is just the the beginning. Like it's just so much more I want to do. It's but. it's more, but yeah. girl, you have you have really set the tone and the blueprint for real for a lot of us. Thank you. So you wow. needed to hear that, but I I definitely need to build community. So that's something I want to focus on yes. this year. Yes. And I also have a bossy a, a a coffee line called Bossy Coffee. Yes. Um, on. and I actually just um hire some mentors because okay. if I was trying to sell it and I'm like I, you know what I gotta make a real big investment <laughs> yeah I'm not about to do this on my own facts, facts. I need to I need I need mentorship yeah so don't be afraid to get mentors Ooh, you know that's good because yo we don't got 100k and 200k to be wasting no we don't, I don't. <laughs> we, no we I don't care how much money you yeah. got it don't matter yeah I don't yes. I don't so I'm excited yes. I'm excited about my coffee line yes so. well I'm excited to see all the things I know the girls like Jacob is recently single <laughs> so are yes. you helping him find uh uh are we gonna have a lot yeah. more love like it's a guarantee show like girl at this point we need to do reality <laughs> with the with the writer strike going yeah. on because first yeah. of all they shutting everything down yes but yes. um no ma'am we will not be doing that <laughs> But uh, <laughs> the girls is like, man, let me call Miss Tish Taylor up because she got the connection. <laughs> Listen, I just try to give my adult son yes, his the baby. best his the best advice and keep it moving. Yes, I love you know, it. That's I love it. it. I love that's it. it. This is a good conversation. <laughs> this was good, y'all. Listen, y'all make sure y'all follow her. Y'all tap into her journey. I want y'all to know that it's about to blow up, and I want Thank y'all to know she's right here at the ghetto CEO first. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited about the next level. Now, listen, y'all. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe the to the podcast. Okay. Make sure you leave a review, a comment, all the things. Share this to your friends because being a CEO is giving very much ghetto. So I will see you guys on the next episode. Peace out. New event. Who the ghetto? Invoice in.